Due to scientists' mistake, the Earth atmosphere changed and started an ice age, and no life could survive. But humans found a way to survive. Hello everyone, film seeker presenting, Snowpiercer. In the beginning, we are told, many countries were concerned about global warming from the past seven years. Scientists claimed the artificial cooling substance CW7 is the answer to global warming. In an attempt to bring down the global average temperature, on 2014, 79 countries dispersed CW7 into the atmosphere, soon after which, the world froze, all life became extinct, a few survived by boarding a circumnavigational train, Snowpiercer, are the last survivors. The train is running for 17 years, starting from 2014, and it completes a cycle of Earth in one year. Inside the train we see few guards enter the tail compartment of the train, where the poor live. The passengers on the train are segregated, with the elite in the luxurious front section, and the poor in a dirty, and unpleasant tail compartments controlled by armed guards. They start counting them, the guards ask if there are any violinists here, and send them to collect food in a line. They are given the same food all the time, it is called protein bar, an old couple come forward and say they can play violin. The guard check their hand, and takes only the old man, the old man refuses to come without his wife. The guard beats up the woman, and stamps on her hand. The old man is forcefully taken by guards to play violin. After the guards leave, we see Curtis and Edgar, searching for something in everyone's bar. Then a woman named Tanya, calls Curtis, and indicates what they are searching is with his son. Although Timmy doesn't want to exchange his bar, they manage to exchange the bar. Tanya asks if it's time to revolt, because their condition was very bad, and they had no facilities, he says not yet, soon. Inside the bar, they find a capsule. Every time they are given a bar, one of it has a capsule which contains a message from some unknown person from the head section of the train, and Curtis collect it as he is the leader. When they open it they see a name written, which says, Nam Kong Min Su. It's a name of a person who is a security expert, and is in prison section now. They want to revolt since their conditions are not good, but they cannot open the gates in each compartment, and Nam could open it. When the guards come to give the bars, the three gates are all open at the same time for four seconds, they plan to go through three gates, and bust Nam out. Then they have to depend on Nam to open the gates, rest of the way. He plans to take over the engine, and asks Gilliam to run the train, saying Wilford should not run the train, Gilliam says I'm too old for that. Later at night, when Curtis and Edgar were lying, and having some conversation, guards come and collect all kids. After that a lady comes, and starts to take measurement of those kids. She was look for kids with specific size for some specific work, which we will get to know at the end. She takes Tim, and another boy, who is son of Andrew, they don't want their kids to be taken away, and Andrew throws a shoe at her, although she takes those kids with her, but guards capture him, hung a watch on him, and through a hole, they expose his hands outside the train, where it's too cold and after seven minutes it's removed, and his hand is completely frozen, then they hit it with a hammer, and his hand breaks into pieces, later they all collect barrels, they will use it to block the three gates from closing. Curtis thinks the guns don't have bullets, they've used up all their bullets four years ago on the last revolt. He thinks bullets are extinct. Then we see a man who draws the pictures of things happening here, he draws the kid's portrait for the parents who lost their kids, and gives it to them, so they don't lose hope, on the other hand their preparation is over. When the guards come to give in them protein bars, they try to start the revolt but the guards silence them by pointing gun at some old man. Curtis walks to the guard, makes him point his head, and pulls the trigger himself. Luckily there were no bullets, then everyone start to attack the guards, and make their way to the prison section, where Minsu is kept in a small metal container, they open it, find him unconscious, but Curtis has Cronal, a kind of drug which is used a lot in the front section, it's an industrial waste, and it's highly flammable, as he place it near Minsu's nose, as its smell goes into his nose, he wakes up. Curtis says that we know you are Min Su, security specialist, who designed all the door locks and the security systems on the train. We are going to the front, and we need your help to open up the gates. Ming Su asks if I don't want to. Curtis says he will give him one lap of uncut chronal for every door he opens. Ming Su opens the box next to his, which has a girl inside. Ming Su says that she is his daughter Yona, to move forward, we need her, and for each door, he asks two blocks of chronal. Curtis agrees for it. And now he start preparing to open the next door. But before the door opens, his daughter says there's nobody on the other side of the door. She has an ability to know what's inside something. The door opens and what she said was true. They left this compartment, and after many years they see a window. They see that the whole world is still covered in ice. Then Minsu prepares to open the next door. 
and she says there's one guy, when the door opens we see there's one guy named Paul, who they already know, who once used to live with them but now they know that he was taken so he can prepare bars for these people, when Curtis and another man, sees inside the machine through which bars are coming out, he sees it's full of cockroaches, which is what they were eating for so many years, he is shocked to see this, and tells the other man to never say about this to anyone, Curtis finds a capsule, and asks if he was the one who used to write it, he says, he don't write them, they just leave them for him, he put them in the protein block, and send them on, when he opens it, he sees the message saying water, Paul says few sections ahead is where the water's cleansed, and recycled, which is one of the crucial sections of the train, Gilliam says, if we control the water, we control the negotiation, and we don't even have to go to the engine, then Minsu starts to open the next door, Curtis asks Yona, is she as clairvoyant, she asks, what's that, he says that, you always seem to know what's behind the gates, she stands in front of the gate again, and says not to open it, but it's too late, and the gate opens, they see a group of masked men armed with axes, they immediately start a battle, and many are slaughtered, and the compartment is stained with blood, during the chaos, an officer standing behind announces that the train is passing through a time marked bridge, meaning another new year for the running train, everyone stops the fight for a while, and cheer for the coming new year, then a person noticed that they will hit an ice that's blocked the track, and tells everyone to get down, the train hits it, and everyone fall down because of the disturbance caused, Minsu and Yona look outside, and notice a landmark, and considers that ice is melting, then Minister Mason appears, who is Wilford's right hand, the second in command on the train and the spokesperson for Wilford for the past 17 years, actually, Wilford is the creator and caretaker of the engine, she says, 18 years ago from today, if Wilford wouldn't have saved you, you all would have frozen to death, he gave you food, shelter, and now you are revolting and trying to capture water supply section, you should not even think about it, but be thankful to Wilford, precisely 74% of you shall die, then all the guards wear night vision goggles, Curtis gets to know that they will pass a long tunnel, and tells everyone to get back, now it's so dark that only people with night vision goggles can see, and they start to brutally kill the people from the back compartment, and then Curtis remembers that a kid has matches, and says loudly, Chan we need fire, then the kid burns a torch and runs towards them, and they burn many torch on the way, now they are able to see everything clearly, and they kill all the soldiers, while Curtis goes to take minister as hostage, another man takes Edgar, he calls Curtis but he chooses to capture the minister, and Edgar is killed, he then takes her as hostage, and stops the fight, the guy runs to kill Curtis from behind but Yona kills him. Tanya and Andrew who lost their kids, ask about them to her, she says she don't know anything about kids, Wilford likes kids, that's why he sent that woman to get them for him, Curtis says to call him, she says he won't come here, he won't leave his engine, Curtis says, we control the water section now, if we turn that off, he'll have to come, she explains that the water comes from the front, the front of the train breaks up the snow and ice, and turns it into water, and turning it off will only affect the rear, and we know you won't harm your own people, Wilford knows you well, he's been watching you, he is not coming here, and you have to go to the front, and I can take you, I know the train, I can guarantee you safe passage, and then you kill him, and let me live. Later that night, since many of their men are kill and many are exhausted, and they have Minister Mason, so Curtis says, let everyone stay, and he would go to the engine with her, Gilliam says that when you get to the narrow bridge, there's a big gate with a W on it, Wilford's behind that. So the next day these people go ahead, and the rest stay behind. As they move forward to the next section, they see that it's full of greenery, here fruits and vegetables are grown. Yona sees soil for the first time because she was born in the train. In the next compartment there is huge aquarium, with many different species of fishes. As they move forward, they see a bar, where they eat real food after many years. While she is about to have food, Curtis says her to eat what they were eating for all these years, and she had to eat it unwillingly, moving forward, they see a school in a compartment, where there are small kids, then Tanya and Andrew show these kids the picture of their kids, and ask them if they have seen them, one of the kids says he saw them pass through this section and go ahead, they see that the kids are thought about the greatness of Wilford, and how he saved humanity, and told that if they go out, or if engines stop, they all will freeze and die, then a man comes carrying eggs, and starts distributing it to everyone, he gives one egg to Curtis too, and heads to the back, Curtis notices that there is a capsule, that same one that they used to receive in protein bars, he opens the capsule, the message written is blood, and then that guy takes out gun and starts firing at them, the teacher too starts firing, the guy frees the army, and then they capture and kill many people from the back, 
Meanwhile here, Andrew is dead, and due to her poor aiming, Gray managed to kill her. Then Curtis has shown the footage of Gilliam being killed by Franco. So Curtis kills Mason. Then they head to the engine. They see people here living a luxurious lives. During a U-turn, Franco targets Yona and shoots at her, but misses since the glass don't break. They move ahead, but Franco soon catches on. Even though he gets injured by Gray's sudden attack, he manages to defeat him. Then Tanya gets killed. Curtis gets unconscious as Franco kicks to his face. He proceeds to stab him, but is saved by Gray. But unfortunately Gray is killed, as he forces the knife deep into him. Then he finds Minsu, but with help of Curtis they finally manage to kill him. Curtis promises Tanya to find her son, then she too dies. The remaining three, Minsu, Yona, and Curtis move forward. They finally reach to the last section before the engine where Wilford is there. He had waited so long to reach here, and lost many people in the process, and he gets impatient, and removes his frustration by hitting the gate. Minsu stops him, and they get in a fight, but soon they calm down, and sit in front of each other. Minsu gives Curtis the last cigarette of humanity, which he had left for a special occasion, he smokes it. Then Curtis shares the horrible past that, when they boarded the train, they didn't even have the time to be thankful for not freezing. Wilford's soldiers came and took everything. There were 1,000 people in the last compartment. There was no food, no water. After a month they started to eat the ones, who are weak. Then the babies, which tasted the best, and he was one among them, and hates himself. Once when he was about to kill a baby, who is Edgar, an old man came, and took the knife and baby, had no relation to the baby. Everyone thought he'd kill the baby himself, but he cut off his own arm, and said, eat this if you're so hungry, but leave the baby, he had never seen anything like that before. Then one by one others started to cut their arms and legs, and offering them, it was a miracle, and that old man was Gilliam. A month later, Wilford's soldiers brought those protein blocks, and they've been eating that shit ever since. He has waited 18 years for this moment. Then asking to open the gate, Minsu says he wanted to open the door, but the other one, the one that leads to the outside. Curtis believes they would freeze to death outside, and calls him crazy. Minsu explains that they could survive. He reminds of the bridge which marks New Year, when everyone was slaughtered with axes. Every New Year, he checks something, a wreckage of a plane. For 10 years the tail can barely be seen. But now he could see the fuselage and wings. There is less and less snow and ice. It's melting. Curtis believes that this chronal is frying his brain. Minsu says that it's highly flammable chemical. A spark and boom. Basically, it's a bomb. And reveals he was not storing it to get high. But to blow this gate, he asks for matches. But Curtis stops him, asking to take that off the door. Right then, the gate opens. A woman in yellow enters, and shoots Minsu, and takes Curtis in. Where Wilford is waiting for him. He says that Curtis, you are the first person to walk the full length of this train, that none of his people have ever been here, to the engine. He reveals that he and Gilliam had actually pre-planned this revolt, so that the population is balanced, also the demand and supply of food. Their original agreement was for the revolt to end at the bridge, and all the survivors would go back to the tail section, and enjoy much more space, but Curtis' counter-attack actually made the revolt ten times more exciting. But unfortunately the front suffered more losses than anticipated, and Gilliam had to pay the price. Then he orders his men to kill 74% of them in the tail section. He then gives Curtis a capsule which he wrote just now. He opens it, and sees trained written on it. Curtis realized that the capsules he used to receive were sent by Wilford. Wilford says I am old, and I want you to take over the engine. It's what even Gilliam wanted, and this train has the last of humanity left. You have the sacred responsibility to lead all of humanity. Without you Curtis, humanity will cease to exist. Without leadership they will devour one another. Meanwhile, the people from the front, start to attack Minsu, because he stole Kronal from them. He defends, and Yona manages to open the gate, then hits the women in yellow, making her unconscious. She runs towards Curtis asking for matches, so they can blast open the side door, but Curtis stops her, appearing to accept Wilford's offer. Then she tries to open a floorboard, Curtis helps her to open it, and finds Tanya and Andrew's children, Timmy and Andy working in the engine as slaves. Wilford explains that the space only allows very small person, children under five, the engine lasts forever, but not all of its parts, a piece of equipment went extinct recently, and needed a replacement, and we had to bring kids from tail section for that. Curtis gets very angry, unable to see this happening to kids, he knocks him out, then blocks the engine with one of his arm, and also gives Yona the matches, she lights the fuse for Kronal and gets inside. Meanwhile Curtis pulls Timmy out of the engine, loses his arm in the process, while Minsu gets in and tries to close the door, 
it doesn't close, and right before the explosion, Curtis and Minsu use their bodies to protect Yona and Timmy from the explosion. The explosion causes an avalanche, which hits the whole train, and derails it. The train comes to a stop after 18 years, many lose their life, and Curtis and Minsu sacrifice their life and save Yona and Timmy. They get out, and see a polar bear in a distance, indicating that life exists outside the train. Then the movie ends, this movie was released in 2013. Its IMDB rating is 7.1 out of 10. Its budget was $40 million, and made $87 million from box office. Hope you all liked the movie, and please consider subscribing if you want to see more explanations.